So if at all we come to a world where everything is running based on the chip, uh, then you might not even sleep. You might be continuously active, like your computers now on sleep mode. Thinking of it, I'm not able to ask my next question. You know, <laughs> I'm just in the imaginary world of this neural link and what it could do and stuff like that. You know, it's amazing. But it is not very far. Five years from now, you're going to see all of this in reality. So you can actually talk to the AGA directly with your brain if you have the internet connection at all. So you want something, an internet connection will be directly in your brain, right? It is not knowing that there is ChatGPT. It is knowing how to ask the right question to ChatGPT so that you can get what you need. Prompt engineering. Yeah. Once the AGA really kicks in, it will go beyond the controls. What do you mean? No one would put control such an entity. I am trying to buy this house. Mm. Uh, I am in US. Yeah. I can't see physically come and see. Yeah. So I can have someone recreate this in a VR environment, uh -huh. and there is a device called Matterport where they will 3D scan the room, okay. and I wear the headset and I quickly see what's happening. Okay. So this is virtual reality. It okay. is not real there, yeah. but they can see it virtually. Yeah. But the metaverse is where I I can actually live here every day, okay. earn money here. I can have a sex here, whatnot. So you could actually create an alternate version of you, which is what we call avatar today. And that, that avatar could also live in this world. You could not get the right health, but in that world you want the right health and you want to play all kinds of sports. So that's how a verse, a universe, which is very meta in nature. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how the concept of metaverse came to nature. But now the, the torch bell for metaverse is Facebook. So I think that's what is going to happen. But when is it happening? Jinesh, the knowledge you're sharing is just amazing. People will not find this on YouTube. Hey Jignesh, thanks for coming in and welcome to Decode Purpose with Avinash. So, so before going ahead with anything, I would love to know what is AR and what is VR, specifically to our audience who are like 20 year old, who wants to know this in depth. So what is AR and VR? From a technical point of view, AR is augmented reality. Mm -hmm. So augmentation typically is always extension of the real world. Mm -hmm. So if you extend your real world by something, by means of technology, by means of hardware, software, whatever it is, it is typically called augmented mm -hmm. uh, aspects of that reality. So in AR, what they do is they bring uh, the elements of data, AI, whatnot, overlapped on the virtual reality that we see, the real reality that we see. Okay. Let's take an example. If you look at the Iron Man movie, mm -hmm. so what Iron Man ha what Iron Man does in the movie is when he's looking at something, he asks Jarvis, "What is this? Mm -hmm. What is the license number? Mm -hmm. uh, does this person have any tickets on him?" Mm -hmm. So immediately it goes in, checks the number with the, with computer vision, goes to the cloud, pulls the data back, mm -hmm. overlaps the data, mm -hmm. and quickly tells you, "Okay, hey, you know what? This is what it is." Mm -hmm. So bringing this world of extension to the real world mm -hmm. is augmented reality, basically. Got it. Like, you mean Pokemon Go, do you think? Pokemon Go is a part of augmented reality too. Okay, what do you so, mean by part here? Part of augmented reality. So Pokemon Go started as AR, but I think now the recent versions, uh, recently I was in Singapore, the old people are still playing the Pokemon Go oh, there. Okay. So uh, now I think it's moving towards more of a mixed reality is what I believe. Okay. I haven't got a chance to check it yet. Okay. So, but that's where uh, my assumption is. Let's also discuss mixed reality after VR. Now, uh, coming to virtual reality, uh, VR is primarily a, a virtual side of real reality. So let's define the spectrum. We call it the XR continuum. So before okay. we go into definition, let's call the, let's draw a line. Okay. This line is called XR continuum. Okay. Okay. Now on the XR continuum, there are two extremes. Mm -hmm. This is the virtual reality. This is the real reality. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now from here, as we go towards the virtual reality, there are different stages. Okay. So the first stage is augmentation. Mm -hmm. So it, it stays as it is, we add something to it. Okay. The next stage is mixed reality. Okay. This is where this world comes closer. Okay. That's the reason this is a mix of both. Okay. That's the reason it's called mixed reality. Okay. And the more far extreme is called the virtual reality. Okay. So here there's no real aspects at all. Okay. You're completely in a different world. Okay. So take an example of uh the Avatar movie. Okay. So Avatar, where you wear a head, you, you sit in a bucket in mm -hmm. a box mm -hmm. and you operate a machine on a different world altogether. Okay. So that could be your virtual reality in your mind inside. Mm -hmm. So, and then we call Avatar typically as a hyper reality. Okay. Where you are controlling something else somewhere else sitting mm -hmm. here. So these are different aspects of XR continuum. Okay. So what is exactly virtual uh, reality like? To define it in a line or two, if you don't. Mind. Everything that is fake, okay, or everything that is not real, okay, goes in the VR aspects of it. 
Okay. So an example could be again, uh, I'm wearing the headset mm -hmm. and I'm translated into a new world of Mars. Okay. So which is not real at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's where the real VR comes into picture. Okay. So without wearing a headset, a headset, we used to have that game called Vice City, you know, GTA Vice City, right? Is it also VR because we are in a fake world, but inside a computer? True. In fact, uh, every, uh, everything that we created in terms of games are also virtual worlds. Okay. We call them virtual worlds, not virtual reality. Okay. And what's the difference? Okay. So this is a world where I'm interacting with. Mm -hmm. In virtual reality, you live in that, you, you are immersed in the world. Okay. So the only difference in both is immersion. Okay. Now what is immersion? Mm -hmm. Immersion is where you involve all your senses. senses. So when you immerse all your five senses, mm -hmm. that's when you call, you are absolutely immersed. That's okay. how the definition goes. Got it. Now, how do I Im immerse you? Number one, I need to make you feel that you are in that world. So all that you see should be the virtual world. Mm -hmm. Now in the in a in a game that we play, only that small twenty degree field of view mm -hmm. is a screen. The rest is still that pot, this tree, whatnot. Mm, okay. So it is not fully immersed yet. Yeah. So the way VR does it is through high field of view. So the entire glass field of view will go to 120, 160 degrees. Okay. So your eyes typically can see up to 170 to 180, 140 to 160. Mm -hmm. So when you immerse so much, you're fully immersed in the VR, virtual side of it. Okay. Similarly, senses, touch, okay. haptic, mm -hmm. similarly, smell. Mm -hmm. uh, all factory senses. Mm -hmm. So this is how you bring in all the senses together. Mm -hmm. That's when you're hundred percent immersed. Yeah, we're talking about senses here, right? Um, you know, we are right now. I think is able to replicate touch and sometimes even smell. If I'm not wrong, can we replicate uh, taste? Yes. Okay. How? You just need to put something on your mouth. That's all. Okay. So uh, taste is most easier. All factory mm -hmm. is more tougher. Which one? All factory, this smell, okay. smell aspect is more tougher. Yeah. Uh, but again, the, the toughest that we are try trying to crack right now is the haptic. Yeah. So when we say haptics today, the, the most friendly haptic device available are more of hands and pressure sensors. Mm -hmm. But really your skin has got multiple sensors inside it. Exactly. It can sense the pressure, it mm -hmm. can sense the heat, mm -hmm. it can sense a bunch of other things. Okay. So the, your ability to give these senses in a VR world is the tougher part. Okay. You have to wear an entire body suit. Mm. and get it mm. but this is all through hardware mm. but if you want to go beyond it mm. that's where what neural link is doing will come exactly into i just want to ask about neural link you know can we insert neural link into our brain and replicate all our senses in a virtual reality and stuff absolutely like that? in fact you can just remove the body take the brain out mm -hmm. give the feeding material in terms of uh, blood uh, glucose activate to mm -hmm. that so that the brain can now function independently mm -hmm. and it can actually control instead of neurons connecting to our hands, mm -hmm. these neurons can connect to any machine okay. or a computer yeah. with, with which you can control anything. Okay. This is a possibility and it is already, we are close to that. Okay. That's what Neuralink is also all about. So can you put it in a perspective? Like what can we do? Like if you want to maybe cook a Hyderabadi Dam Biryani, can we insert a Neuralink chip here? and be in a virtual world, see, feel everything about cooking, you know, Hyderabadi Dam Biryani and just replicate in our own homes and stuff like that. This might be a silliest example. See, if I, if I really think, get to that stage, yeah. I would not even want to create a... Uh, because uh, I can directly feel that I have already consumed it. Okay. I can, I can just trigger the right electron, uh, electronic senses there or, or the electrical senses there okay. so that it can immediately tell me, hey, you know what? You are already eating biryani. This is the taste. Feel it. Okay. You can make it happen without even doing anything. But then what happens to our calorie requirement? Like You can give just the uh, saline water based <laughs> supply of things. <laughs> okay. This is the future. This is how it is going to be. How many years? We are I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it all depends upon a bunch of other things, but mm -hmm. uh, possibility per se, we are there. So essentially what you're saying is with the help of Neuralink and VR, people will not eat food just for sake of eating food. If Neuralink just... comes, there is no need for VR is what I'm saying. Sorry? If Neuralink fully comes to market, okay. there is no need for VR. Oh, It will okay. make you always live in VR. See, okay. the best example of VR is your, your dream. Okay. In your dream, nothing is real. Mm. But the way you feel it is very real. Mm. Many times you might have in the childhood, you might have just pissed just imagining you're in a washroom. Exactly. The reason is it immerses all your senses right in the brain. Mm. So highest form of immersion for virtual world happens in a dream. Okay. If you can recreate them 
Okay. You will never know what is a dream and what is a reality. This is what you almost call simulation. Mm. So when you put a chip in your brain, you really don't know what is real and what is fake. Okay. Because that's how the brain perceives. Okay. This is interesting. Because are we ready as a humanity for that Neuralink world where, you know, See many things. We we are tech guys. We are mm. we are the science guys. So yeah. we don't right now worry about the feasibility aspects. Mm. We right now worry about making it happen. Okay. So once that is done, then the philosophers come into picture. The arts <laughs> the art students come. The humanities people come into picture, yeah. and that's when they'll start looking at the feasibility, the biases, the bunch of other things that kicks in later. Okay. So first let's build it. Mm. Then let's figure out how to deploy it. Okay. So that's the way to way so to. So all in all. you support for neuralink and you think that is a good for humanity i support anything that's going ahead in terms of technology advances so mm-hmm. any sophisticated technology is where the support goes okay so that's how any engineer or scientist thinks what are the two ways this could go wrong what are the two things that could go wrong if not handled properly with neuralink have you seen this movie wally no so check mm-hmm. this movie anyone who is watching wally or who has watched the wally movie mm-hmm. uh, if you remember the people will be in space station just sitting on a big bucket uh, with a headset on Okay, and they will have huge bellies. Mm. They can't even walk. Okay, because they're just stuck to the chair. They they're getting the feeding done, mm. and then the headset will show them anything that they want to show them. Mm. So it can make a lot of wellness and health related issues prevalent. Yeah, it can do a lot of other things in a bad way, but there are always ways ways to curb that. Mm. So today's work is itself. an example mm. so today we go and sit in front of a desk for the entire day mm. and we get all those health issues lifestyle issues and etc true what is the remedy for that go out and exercise that's all mm. similarly these things also going to find their own solutions yeah you know especially when we're talking about health and fitness i'm more worried about mental wellness because when you're getting dopamine on a secondly basis right now at least you know we need like some time to get that dopamine hit if we want something you know maybe watching reels or something but when you no know, neuralink happens the dopamine hits happens in a second or microsecond you know basis you no know, what will that be for our brains like you know it's already happening as we speak so today if you go through your instagram feed you continuously get to see something you you it, it evokes an emotion to you yeah. so every minute there is an emotion being evoked mm. so at some point so if you keep on doing it for more than 20 minutes mm. at some point you feel that your brain is more numb. uh not numb i would say exhausted okay yeah. releasing so many hormones and sensing so many hormones yeah. uh and these neural transmitters mm. uh, neurotransmitters it gets exhausted yeah so you feel that exhaustion too True. at some point but you don't want to give it up mm. so this is the challenge that's that's the reason many of us could not stop scrolling at the night when Because we just it sleep. gives a benchmark you know when uh, it, it keeps raising your benchmarks your dopamine uh, exactly. levels of levels yeah. as well mm. so the only way is de-addiction so yeah. it is like you are a drinker every drinker now you have to go short and you de- de-addict uh, it's the same thing that we have been to do de-addict from the digital technologies yeah so there are many ways to do that uh, i i'm trying a few myself yeah so that's the way like what are you doing i try to i try to turn off my or put the phone away winding off we call winding off mm-hmm. so i try to wind off my uh, phone activity at least 20 30 minutes before i go to bed okay. in the last few minutes i always sleep and read okay. so that has been a trend for me <laughs> since my school and college days mm. so i take that now i read 5 5 to 10 pages by then i'll get this sleepy uh, numb numbness mm-hmm. and i start sleeping <laughs> so that's the way i figured out so essentially you know reels are at least taking 20 minutes and your dopamine benchmark while you are u- using reels after 20 minutes maybe let's say on a scale of 1 to 100 it may be reaching 98 and it takes 20 minutes it at least takes 20 minutes that's a good amount of time but when neuralink is in your brain your benchmarks are above your control like it could be even 100 like all the time so at that point of time maybe 10 minutes into the day after you waking up if your dopamine already hit the 100 benchmark and your rest of the day is almost ruined right so so how- right now we are talking about imaginary things so yeah. which we don't know yet so if at all we come to a world where everything is running based on the chip uh then we might not even sleep you might be continuously active like your computers now on sleep mode back in the day 10 years ago when i was my first computer i used to shut down every night yeah now we don't yeah we let them sleep exactly so it might happen the same way we don't know yet this is still a foreign area for us to talk about and i am not a researcher actively engaged there so i don't know much of what's happening mm. in the real world there Great. but yeah this is amazing like you know 
thinking of it i'm not able to ask my next question you know <laughs> i'm just in the imaginary world of this neural link and what it could do and stuff like that you know it's amazing but it is not very far 5 years from now we are going to see all of this in reality yeah let's see <laughs> so now coming back from neural link for for the people who don't understand neural link you know in a better way could you just put it in few perspective of words like you know a define neural link and how it works in general so you need to understand how the brain works first yeah so brain is nothing but in a set of wires inside called neurons exactly we we'll have something called axioms etc so it's mm. it's basically wires inside yeah so you have different nodes there wherever the electricity goes sparking uh it forms a part it passes in a particular pathway Mm. So every particular pathway in it, which goes, there's a particular action that happens. Mm. So this is how the brain works. Mm. Now we call them neural synapses. We call them uh, neural pathways, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. When a child is born, uh, we don't have a lot of neural pathways created. Yeah. As they learn, they keep triggering or firing these neurons. Eventually, those pathways form. Yeah. So by the age of ten, twelve, uh, most of the neural pathways are formed. Mm. By the age of twenty, they're almost frozen. Okay. So that means uh, your cognitive function won't grow beyond the age of twenty. Okay. Whatever you build is almost that. Okay. Very rarely, for extreme conditions, it it gets better. Mm-hmm. So if you have to, if you have to test a person's IQ, mm-hmm. real IQ, it you you can test it at the age of twenty because after that it won't grow much. Okay, twenty and then forty almost same. In fact, twenty to forty, that it will go down oh. actually. So because now your brain, your neurons are getting older, yeah. it won't generate. So your mm-hmm. your brain's ability to generate new neurons every day also goes down. Okay. So that means your existing neurons are dying. Mm-hmm. So the same neuron has to do multiple functions now. So that's the reason. This is how for the neural cognitive functions go down as you age. Mm-hmm. But luckily, brain has a very interesting factor called plasticity. Okay. So what is plasticity? Neuroplasticity is what we really leverage when people go with strokes. uh people get a brain surgery where the part of the brain is removed mm. still you can make them evolve with the rest of the brain picking those rest, uh, neural pathways in the remote brain oh, okay. so you can actually do that mm-hmm. uh this is how, what the physiotherapy aspects of repetitions mm-hmm. reps and etc called okay so that part of the brain is damaged you mm-hmm. keep ma- making the rest of the brain pick those functions okay you can actually do that okay so there there is a case study as well where post an accident almost 70% of the brain is removed from a person okay. and the rest of the 30% took all the fundamental scenarios they might not have most of those emotional aspects the character might have been gone but still the functional the aspects functional is happily there. gets done well wow. so that's the best part about our brain okay now this brain also important thing is it doesn't take blood by the way okay so bla- inside the brain it doesn't take the white, uh, red colored blood okay so there are uh, filters which will just remove the remove the essential parts for the feeding of the brain element brain cells mm. and then it it runs on it okay now if you can actually isolate this brain mm. and put in a chip there mm. and stimulate the new the electrical impulses the way you want it okay where the impulse has to come when it has to come mm. so you are fakely creating those impulses okay. which would rather happen naturally okay so that's how the concept of neural link came into picture okay so the idea is uh, there are cases let's say schizophrenia mm. or mental illnesses etc yeah. one of the treatments is brain simulation okay so they put a small chip uh, they put the electrical nodes and then they stimulate your brain through those impulses mm. so your brain starts getting uh, the missing pulses which will make it work better now okay similarly people who have lost their hands and legs uh, can be directly given a chip access mm. so that you can have a prosthetic robotic hand which can be controlled by the direct chip mm. without the neurons here Mm. So this is how the idea for re- neural link came into picture. Mm. But the best part is this: if we are anyway putting a chip, why don't we put a small memory to that mm. so, and and dump the memory into it like the robot chitti, mm. where you just read it or pre-dolled karate, kung fu, etc., etc., yeah. and you already know them by default. Yeah. So this is the idea with which this all started. Mm. So when Elon Musk started the company called uh, Neural Link, uh, people said it's too far. Yeah. But last year they already demonstrated all of this on pigs. Yeah, I think even US FDA approved it. If I'm not wrong, ah, uh, for medical scenarios, okay. for very specific people who have lost their hands or very deep mental issues, mm. uh, that's where they started stimulating, putting this chip, sending continuous signals. Mm. So a bunch of these things start happening. So if FDA approved this, like you know, for medical scenarios, how many years are we? Like maybe four or five years See, till we get approved. Neuralink is only for... one company. There are a bunch of companies doing it specifically for medical use cases. Okay. Neuralink is thinking more of a generic use case, oh, okay. where anyone can put a chip in their mind. Mm-hmm. But there are a bunch of companies and research uh, institutes working on pure medical scenarios. Okay. 
so this is already there exoskeletons are already there mm. so so neuralink in that we have memory and possibly a large language model or ai inserted inside once there is memory you put anything there yeah yes okay so how do you see the convergence between neuralink and ai you can directly talk to the uh, agi the mm. the artificial general intelligence yeah so you can actually talk to the agi directly with your brain if you have the internet connection at all so you want something an internet connection will be directly in your brain like right? you don't need a like <laughs> maybe a small chip for now yes so you want a question and it will be answered so knowledge will be relevant if you want to create a backend of an app exactly this yeah. is what we have to discuss now yeah. so back in the day when when our grandparents were actually in the market yeah. finding jobs <laughs> everything that they focused on is by hearting things exactly because they can't just pull out a book anywhere or take out the phone and google things mm. so the more they know in their brain the better the chances of employment for them are exactly that's how our traditional education system has evolved True. where you have to by heart everything including 2 ones are 2 2 2 2 2 four yeah so those basic tables etc square roots what not yeah but now already we are seeing that no one knows those quick mathematics anymore Mm. no one cares about them because you just have a calculator exactly so and you can do it yourself tomorrow it's going to be the same for even engineering subjects or scientific subjects mm. so all that you need to do is if you have information mm. how will you use it okay so this is where the real cognitive functions come into picture yeah right now the importance or 30 years ago the importance was not on cognitive functions it's more on your knowledge yeah currently it is a mix of cognition and knowledge mm. because still knowledge is very very crucial today mm. but tomorrow's world when i say tomorrow next 5 years mm. knowledge no one cares yeah because the systems will give you the it's knowledge it's your unique perspective and creative matters it's your ability to apply that knowledge exactly yeah. so the applied sciences is where the real world will move towards okay so no one cares about all the by hearting anymore and what do you mean by applied science here So applied science goes everywhere. Applied quantum, applied mechanics, applied exactly, everywhere. Yeah. But we are talking about application of all the sciences in real life. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's take an example. How does your brain work mm-hmm. uh, from from any perspective? Let's say, for example, I am sitting here. Mm-hmm. My senses are grabbing everything that are here. Yeah. Now, once my senses are coming in so much information, this is where my brain level one will start gathering the right information together mm-hmm. and uses that information to process things. True. And at this point, let's say for example, I am trying to process a conversation here. Mm-hmm. My brain says, "Hey, you know what? In this entire conversation, I'm seeing some patterns." Yeah. Okay. These are the patterns you need to pick up. Yeah. Now, this concept of finding patterns in general aspects mm-hmm. is called inductive reasoning. True. Okay. okay. Now you reason inductively. Yeah. Now, once you have those general principles and patterns observed, now you are able to apply it in a different situation altogether. Yeah. This is called deductive reasoning. Yeah. Now while these reasonings are happening your thinking styles also goes in two ways convergent or divergent. True. So let's say for example when I'm trying to solve a problem mm-hmm. I want to make something work here there are four elements around me mm-hmm. how do I use these four things to actually make this work? Mm-hmm. So this is called convergent thinking style okay. where you bring four five things together and yeah. towards that. Yeah. So this thinking style is more prevalent in Sherlock Holmes and mm-hmm. detectives exactly. and what not. Yeah. Even Jugard in Indian yes. way when he says Jugard <laughs> I have a a uh, range spanner etc using this can i do something else yeah so this is all the jugad or convergent thinking style got it then there is other thinking style called divergent thinking style mm. so these are people let's say for example there is this class yeah. what all can i do with this class mm. can i pour the water here can i make some drawing around it yeah. so whatever i can do with this mm. if i imagine that that's called divergent thinking style okay so this is very important for creativity okay. this is very important to bring out innovations mm. So in a country like US people would really want to appreciate the cre- the lateral thinking aspects or the divergent thinking aspects. Oh, okay. Whereas in a country like India why we appreciate creativity we also want them resource con- we have resource constraints. Mm. So with less resources we have to be more creative mm. and find out something else. Mm. So we are the country where we have to use both sides of these things divergent as well as convergent aspects. Okay. So that's the reason our people have a different way of thinking and looking at things. Mm-hmm. And that's an advantage which we are bringing to the general world and mm-hmm. in general. Yeah. So when you have no resource constraints you think one way. Okay. When you have so many resource constraints still you have to work as good as the other ones then your brain works very differently. Got it. So that's why I think from my own pers- perspective uh, the reason why the top CEOs of the world are from India is because we have that that, that is our real contribution to the world is what I think at the moment. 
So yeah. we are convincing thinkers. So now what you're saying is applied science is about how you're recognizing patterns from the real world and applying them in the right situation, either by doing conversant, you know, conversant thinking or divergent thinking. Here there is one aspect also. Let's say, for example, this is the information I have. How yeah. do I use it? Yeah. This is okay. Yeah. Now, f- imagining, okay, I don't have the information. Where do I get the information? How do I get that information? If I also have knowledge about that. Yeah. So this is the reason why people say if you're really good at Googling, mm. you don't need anything else. True. But the problem is people Googling is the toughest skill people are figuring it out. Very true. So this people is the future. People still don't know how to Google perfectly 100%. And this is the future. Yeah. It is not knowing that there is chat GPT. It is knowing how to ask the right question to chat GPT so that you can get what you need. Prompt engineering. That's what we call prompt engineering today. Yeah, which we'll talk a little later. Sure. So now... If AGI is as smart or in fact a little more smarter than humans, don't you think it will observe everything we are doing from hundreds of people's, hundreds of perspectives of hundreds of people and will be also giving that applied sciences to us? Not only information, it will also say, hey, this is the information, use this in, in this way because somewhere in New York, uh, someone did this. So in New GVD, you are here. So you do something like this. So it You're can, talking... The possible good about it. Let yeah. me tell you possible bad about it. <laughs> if a if the A wanted, if the AGA wanted something to happen, it will make it happen by only limiting the access of information that you have. What you see can be restricted by that. True. So let's say the truth is X, but it will make you see Y. Yeah, that's what our social media is doing right now. Correct. Yeah. So today people are doing it. Tomorrow AGA is going to do that. It is bound to happen. Because AG is controlled by a couple of companies in the world. So they they are not in our best. Be, no, they don't want us those to companies. Be. It will go beyond those companies. Yeah. Once the AG really kicks in, it will go beyond the companies. What do you mean? No one would, would control such an entity. Okay. So that's so my assumption. It will become an independent authority. That's what AGA means. By the way, so, for anyone who is looking at the podcast today, what is AGA? There is AI and the future of AI is the AGA. The BAP of AI, <laughs> where uh, it is called the artificial general intelligence. It might become that one godly figure which controls everything in the world. You should watch the movie called Lucy. And that Lucy movie climax is the possible AGI. Oh, God. And there is now something called ASI on top of AGI, artificial super intelligence. It's People, all the same, yeah. Just like mimicking entire human brain, 100% ability into a code. They're saying, you know, that will be beyond AGI for something like that. So now when AGI happens and when Neuralink happens and we put both of them in our brain, Neuralink will not only give the information, but it will also give you how to use the information. If it, if at all, it has the best interest in you that it, it really wants to help you, it will also give you that. So knowledge is already relevant right now because of the AI, Google and all that. And ability to apply that knowledge is soon also going to be not that of an important thing because of AGI and uh, stuff like that. Because AGI is as smart as human being and or maybe beyond smart. See, so how point, are we seeing this? At one point, I think humans doesn't need to do anything. Exactly. We will be chilling on a beach, you know, or having you, a massage. Or you will be used as labor by exactly. the AGI. AI might see us like a flies. No, they'll treat us like a bullshit. Or it might think that we are the harm to the real world or and the galaxy and it might just terminate kill, us. Kill the entire humanity just with one click. Again, these are all speculations, <laughs> imaginary. imaginary things. <laughs> don't, don't fear, guys. This is not reality, but a possible <laughs> you know, outcome. So, Jignesh, thanks for all this. So, now the main point of this podcast is to actually discuss about metaverse. So, we talked about AR, VR. We also talked about a little bit of uh, mixed reality where you're using a bit of AR and VR. To get the best, you know, cognition or a best stimulation possible. So now what is metaverse? Buzzword everywhere these days. See, metaverse as a word was framed in early 90s. Mm-hmm. Uh, where, when, when an author used the, used the word for the first time in his book. In a potential futuristic world where everything is something else that you can imagine of. That's how the book went on. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, when uh, the real metaverse came to the world by a com- through a company called the Second World, what's it called? Mm. Second World or something. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll recall the name in the mind. Yeah. So that's where uh, people could create an alternate version of themselves. Mm-hmm. Let's say in this world, I am six feet uh, white guy. In the new world, I want to be 7.5 feet uh, something else. 
So you could actually create an alternate version of you, which is what we call avatar today. And uh, that avatar could also live in this world. You could not get the right health, but in that world, you want the right health and you want to play all kinds of sports. So that's how a verse, a universe, which is very meta in nature. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how the concept of metaverse came into picture. But now the, the torch bearer for metaverse is Facebook. All the other companies kind of shut the operations in the metaverse aspects. Uh, Google's uh, Google Lens project has been shut off for some time now, or they're doing it subtly. Uh, similarly, uh, Magic Leap and a bunch of other companies, uh, HTC Vive, no one is really spending that much money now because everyone realized that it is taking more time to get to the real world. ROI, no, ROI. Uh, ROI, the return yeah. on investments are not really good. Yeah. The only one blindly and very courageously spending money and betting on it is today, Facebook. Yeah. Which is, again, I would say Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. Uh, the other entity that's going to launch their own versions of these devices would be Apple. Apple recently. But we have to wait and see what's going to happen there. Yeah. So now, uh, difference between VR and Metaverse, is it any difference? So Metaverse, so VR is where I can put you in a virtual world. Okay. If that virtual world becomes as good as your real world. Okay. And you, you behave and live in that world, like in this real world. That's called a Metaverse. Okay. So it's an artificial universe. Okay. So world is a smaller entity. Mm. Universe is a bigger entity. Got it. Where you will do everything there parallelly. Yeah. Best example would be Ready Player One. Okay. So if you look at the Ready Player One movie, uh, everyone wears the headset and then uh, in a normal world. But when they, the moment they wear the headset, they're in a different world, mm. playing targets, challenges, doing multiple things. Mm. So that's the metaverse. Wow. So VR is a world where we're going in and observing things. And uh, metaverse is like, what if we could make that world as real as possible? Simple example. Yeah. VR's best example could be, I'm trying to buy this house. Mm. Uh, I'm in US. Yeah. I can't see, physically come and see. Yeah. Now I can have someone recreate this in a VR environment. Uh -huh. And there's a device called Matterport where they'll, it'll 3D scan entire room. Okay. And I wear the headset and I quickly see what's happening. Here. Okay. So this is virtual reality. It okay. is not real there, yeah. but they can see it virtually. Yeah. But the metaverse is where I, I can actually live here every day. Okay. I can just live here. I can have, uh, I can earn money here. I can, mm. I can have a sex here, whatnot. I can do anything here. Mm. So that's the universe where we're talking about. Got it. Now that we're talking about sex using metaverse and stuff, how, how are we seeing the convergence of sex dolls having sex with metaverse? Like, do you see any patterns here? Because I feel people were depressed and they were not able to form connections as much as we are forming, uh, we formed in, you know, 2010 or 2015 because of multiple reasons these days, no the dopamine hit, which we talked, even a USA survey. See, there are two aspects here. First of all, we need to understand the importance of porn and technology industry. Yeah. So if you look at any, any technology, starting from internet as it is to uh, mobile tech or uh, 5G tech or whatnot, everything started and got exemplified using, uh, with, with this industry called porn. Mm. So first adopter for the cutting edge technologies have has always been porn industry. Oh. Yes. So and when it got a decent traction and a critical mass, that's when it went into the real world. Mm -hmm. Just imagine the internet speech would not be what it was if not for porn. Oh. Because people are so struggling to find out, figure it out, watch them at, without buffering and etc. So people and it's it's the highest volume consumption in the world back in the day okay. when YouTube did not exist as it was now. Mm. So from there on, when you start looking at those uh, remote devices or VR headsets and etc., the, the continuous biggest use case still is in gaming and the porn. Mm. So porn industry, in a one in, in a way, has been the propeller of technologies, new technologies. Mm. That's part number one. Mm. Now part number two is more to do with the mental aspects of it. Mm. So again, as we discussed earlier, it's all instant dopamine. Mm. If you're getting something instantly, why do you want to worry about it with extra pain and effort and exactly. etc. Yeah. So back in the day, for you to have the dopamine release of having a sex, you need to first go out. Let's talk about US market, not Indian market. You, you need to go out, find a girl, try to date, try to get the first date, second date, third date, then eventually you start get there. Mm. So this is a journey. So it gives you slow dopamine, level-wise dopamine. And the final one is the climax. It takes the real effort and time as well. Yeah. So it's a process and it's, yeah. it's, it's a distant process. Yeah. Today, with all the tech and everything that we are seeing here, dopamine itself is so regularly available. Yeah. So back in the day, if you get success, 
imagine your parents the the days when they used to get the dopamine years number one maybe on saturday mm. number two maybe you have achieved something big in the school or college or mm. there's some so there are limited moments of dopamine release in a, in a month for them okay whereas today we have same amount of intense moments in a single day maybe an hour maybe even more yes yeah. so that's the reason you get you 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 slowly start getting away from those aspects of mm. uh, dopamine aspects too at the same time work also mm. the pressure back in the day the pressure point of view we are not really pressurized to earn so much uh, in competitive peer world etc mm. today someone is earning 1 lakh now i have to earn 2 someone has bought a bmw i have to buy 2 someone is uh, taking a residence in a big community i should i should buy 1 Mm. so every day the desires and aspects of aspirations are going up and up mm. so the work is so much now mm. uh, you look at the japanese market they are the most competitive market in the world today very true and because of that they are the less active market in sex mm. and they are the less uh, active market in the reproduction right now in fact uh, japanese japanese government introduced sex hotels right maybe it's that for uh, for that there bunch of other things japan has been always ahead in terms of anime and a bunch of other things as well there yeah. but that said uh, japan is i won't take japan as a good example because they are not really good at respecting women they see women as still dolls and etc oh. uh, they, they see women as second uh, generation second level etc okay. so that says japan is not the right example to take here but what i'm trying to convey here is markets where competition is going up okay where young people are seeing many things competitively want to do so many things there's so much to do etc and markets where the dopamine release is continuously happening this is where the reproduction of those markets are going down mm. look at any market for that matter the first markets which are getting older and are not getting enough young young kids or children born are the markets which are again fast forward us japan germany these are the oldest markets mm, mm, mm. in fact uh, from a startup point of view if you are looking at these markets the next generation is all about geriatrics mm-hmm. so tools and products for old, older people mm-hmm. because older people are not anymore 60s they are going to be 80s and 100s true so that's the reason tools for the older people softwares and solutions for older people that's the next market opportunity okay in those markets okay. whereas in a market like india the youngest world the highest populated where china was 20 years ago we are today now mm. so our spectrum is very different true so we need to look at businesses very differently in different markets mm. to go get back uh, reproduction sex etc two reasons one people are getting busier okay. in their own life with so many aspirations mm. unlike our parents aaram se chill shampo ghar pe jao and then relax that's not any more the case mm. second one over dopamine release in a day okay so these are the other aspects yes so now you uh, will this impact in a good way or a bad way it's a bad way everyone knows it okay everyone knows it mm. so those who could cater it very well are the ones who are going to crack the system got it and uh, believe me if you don't do it faster uh, these behaviors will slowly get embedded in our dna mm. and this is what will be forwarded to, to the, the next, next generation generations. correct wow. so okay. it won't take a lot of time to actually embed behaviors into dna how many years it will take i don't know but i think it used to take multiple generations but these years things are going pretty fast when you observe a small kid uh, let's say 10 years ago a small two year kid the way they act the way the cognitive functions are to today's two year two year kid mm. drastic differences mm. so that means the dna is quickly adapting faster mm. and the next generations are coming faster with more evolved senses and experiences mm. of the parents okay so what should we do to prepare we don't do anything way? just just cut down these things follow those good interesting aspects cut down what things cut down dopamine release continuously okay so set your timers mm-hmm. uh, ensure that you don't spend more time there find tasks and create a curriculum for yourself where you you have prolonged delay of release of dopamines okay so you have to create those tough tasks okay. let's say for example fitness uh, fitness is a task why people won't do much is because no you can't get results overnight true no instant gratification so people open it but they can't continue it because you are not getting the instant result but if you could spend that enough time to continuously get there that's when the result come delayed gratification also will give you a deeper result mm-hmm. so one of the interesting concepts here is a challenge called 75 hard okay uh, it's a very prevalent challenge in the us market india also has done a lot of these things mm-hmm. many instagram has did that mm-hmm. and i personally did uh, a few oh, months ago what is it so it's a 75 day challenge where you have to follow five tasks every day for 75 days okay. if you miss one task on a day you have to restart the challenge okay so this unlike many people think it's not a fitness challenge it is more of a mental challenge mm. fitness is a by product exactly so the challenge is pretty simple every day you have to uh, 
follow a diet. Okay. You have to do two workouts, 45 minutes each. One should be outdoor. Oh. Then you need you need to drink a gallon of water every day. Okay. And then you gallon need gallon in liters, please. Gallon means somewhere around 3.5, 3.2, 3.5 liters. Okay, got it. So let's take 3.5 liters per day. Okay. In an Indian environment, maybe four liters is also good. Okay. Okay. So uh, drink four liters of water every day. Mm. Again, don't do it in one go. Do it spread. Obviously, yeah. Yeah. Throughout the day. Otherwise, there's something called water poisoning. That's oh. a different thing. Well, let's talk about that later. <laughs> so, yeah, this happens. So, these yeah. three tasks. You take a picture of your progress every day. Okay, that's the fourth task? That's the fourth task. Okay. Now, the fifth one and the most important one for the young generation is no alcohol and no uh, cheat meals. Okay. So, there is no allow... Uh, you should not allow a simple cheat meal even on a weekend or anything else. Okay. So, it has to be 75 days continuously rigorous. Okay. So, that's the tough part. Okay. So when you do this, the amount of the amount of dopamine prolonged, delayed version of it gives you is very different. Wow! And it happened in, in my own case. I've okay. experienced that. So this is how you you train your brain. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So what happens after seventy five days? We all know we drink more alcohol. We we'll sleep more, we will not exercise because we are bored and, you know, we'll feel that we did so much in 75 days and we are worth doing more in that next 15, 20 days. So what's next? That's right. In fact, that also happened with me. So okay. I, I, because after 75 days, I got a chance. Now I started eating everything I, I, I craved in the last 75 days. Mm. I started uh, drinking more. So I did all kinds of those things as well. But the thing is, you can't forget what you actually were physically. Mm. That, that stays inside you. Mm. Now you would crave for that again. Okay. So you'll go back. So certified day hard is not just a certified day hard. Mm. It's a program called Live Hard. Okay. So after 75 days, the program goes like this. So you have to go do phase one, which is for 30 days. Mm. Take a 30 day break. Do phase two. Mm. Again, 30 day break. Phase three. Mm. And 30 days. Okay. This certified three phases should happen in a year's time. Okay. So exactly in 365 days, you have to complete the entire program. Okay. And once you're done with it, repeat. Okay. Every year. So this is... And you don't even need to repeat it. It will automatically happen. That's the idea. So yeah. again, phase one, phase two, phase three are even complex. It comes with extra three tasks. It is even more complex. Mm. But the point is those who really want to make themselves mentally tough. Mm. This is a good program to begin with. Got it. So essentially what you're saying is to prepare for the AI world or metaverse world where dopamine is instant, we need to do these things as a person. So that will be very perfect for that world. See, when there are so many things thrown at your senses, yeah. your mind loses the control. True. Your body takes the control because True. you're you're craving for those small instant gratifications. True. But the moment you bring your mind back to control, mm -hmm. things will work in a different way. Got it. So the, 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 the exemption of doing all these programs is to bring that mind to your control again. Got it. So, yeah. So now let's go back and talk about Metaverse again. So the one company that is thriving and betting all their money right now on the metaverse is Meta. Like why Facebook or Meta is so very important in the world of metaverse right now? In fact, uh, the word thriving is not rightly used there. So it is not actually thriving today. Okay. Uh, Facebook's or Meta's uh, market value or the share value went down to what it was in 2016. Mm -hmm. So almost it went back by eight years now. Okay. When the entire world is moving so fast, it is going backwards actually. Mm -hmm. But that said, uh, see, the the cutting edge disruptions would happen because of those people who doesn't want to give up. Okay. And I believe Zuckerberg is one of those guys. Elon Musk is one of those guys. Okay. So these are people who went through the phase of tough times and evolved and made things happen. Mm -hmm. And because they have gone through that whole rigor and made those things happen, they evolved as leaders when the world saw the light of those things. So I think that's what is going to happen. But when is the tough part? For a small company like us or for a small entity like each one of you and uh, me, uh, we might not survive so long uh, doing those interesting things. Mm. We need that money to survive. We need to figure out our own life. So we will not survive until then. Mm. But for Meta, with the kind of revenues that they're already generating through ads and a bunch of other things, they have the ability to survive until the day happens. Mm. So it is all that ability to survive until the day happens. Mm -hmm. So those who survive until the day, they are the they are the torch bearers for that day. Wow, got it. And two huge entrepreneurs here, Elon Musk and you know Mark. Why do they fight? You know, recent the fight cage fight and stuff. Why do they fight like all the time on the Twitter and stuff? Why do they? Hate yeah, each I really other? don't know what's going on between them. Yeah, but from my point of view, I think it's more of a attention Rama, grabbing Sadra. drama. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's what I think. 
But at the same time, there are also certain uh, uh, inherent ideological differences uh, that they might have uh, because of which they have that subtle uh, cold cold uh, war oh, going on. Yeah. But yeah, I don't think it's much to worry about. These yeah. are silly things. And Elon Musk is all drama guy. So. Yeah. He, yeah, he loves drama. No, he, that's a byproduct. <laughs> Got it for all the hard work he's doing. Great. So now Apple released Apple Vision Pro and Meta, uh, Meta has their uh, Quest 3 going on. So where do you see, like, do they fit, they, they are, do you think they're in the same category or they're in a different, like, ball game to, when you compare with each other? See, what's you, going on there? If you remember the continuum that I mentioned earlier. Mm. So uh, Facebook started attacking this continuum from this side, virtual yeah. reality side. Yeah. Uh, what Apple is trying to do is to attack this from this side which is the augmented reality side of it. Got it. But eventually, both of them wanted to make it a mixed reality headset. So okay. phase, uh, whatever Meta Quest Pro recently launched, it is not just a VR device. It can also, the cameras can turn on and it can also work as a uh, mixed reality device. Mm. Whereas uh, what is, what's done by Vision Pro, it is fundamentally AR device, but it can also be used as a VR device. Okay. So basically, both of them are coming towards the same direction, mm. but they're starting from different endpoints. Okay. So we need to see which endpoint is the closest path to success. Okay. So that we don't know yet. Okay. So only once we we see the device hands on, that's that's when we're gonna we're gonna know more about it. Okay. So now, AR, Apple, VR, in a quest, they're trying to reach the mixed reality. And what is metaverse here? See, metaverse is a world which this mixed reality will be leveraging. Okay. So, what is iOS? What is uh, Android? No, no. What is iOS? What is iPhone? And what is uh, PUBG? Okay. Now, what's the difference? Okay. One is hardware. The second one is software. The third one is actually the content. Got it. Metaverse is the content. Okay. Mm -hmm. Metaverse is going to be the content of it. So, VR is a technology? VR is a tech. Hardware is the the other aspect. Okay. So, yeah. Is Microsoft also doing something here? Yeah. Microsoft has got something called Microsoft Lens. Mm -hmm. Uh, They start, they are the first ones to actually use the word mixed reality. When they launched Lens, they call mm-hmm. it the, the MR device. Not AR, not VR, they call it MR. Okay. So Facebook uses VR as a word always. Mm. Uh, now these guys are using, Vision is using uh, AR. AR as a word, keyword. Mm. So Facebook, uh, Microsoft is the MR word. Okay. Again, uh, at the end of the day, everyone is trying to create the same thing. Mm. They're, they're naming it, calling it, they're creating their own definitions. Mm. They're creating their own differentiations. So we don't need to bother about those things. Got it. So do you think... Uh, since the rise of AI is happening right now, like every VC is investing a lot of funds in AI rather than metaverse because it's a delayed gratification and that's instant gratification. So are you seeing a little bit of pullback in metaverse AR VR technologies because of AI? Absolutely. So see what happens is investors are not gods. True. They don't know. They, they also don't know what is going to be successful. True. But they also want to ensure that they are not failures when their counterparts are doing the success. Okay. That means if someone is investing somewhere, they'll blindly follow them. Mm. So the most of the cases happen that way. Mm. So when when entire India is getting funded on a tech, every investor is behind a tech. So even if you have a zero product, people get got investments. Now it's slowed down. So same story. Same story is going to happen here as well. So VR has its day. Mm. Uh, 2012 to 2016 was when a lot of investments happened on VR. Mm. Uh, again, nothing much happened big in the market. 2020... 2022, in those two years when Meta changed the name of Facebook to Meta, mm. again, people said, okay, something big is going to happen. Mm. So they, st- they carried on with that investment. Then they realized uh, nothing is happening. Mm. By then, AI came into picture. Mm. So now everyone start betting on AI. Yeah. See, the way investors work is their fund cycles are 8 to 10 years. Yeah. So they have to make their money in 8 to 10 years. Mm. So if something is not going to really su- be successful in the next 8 to 10 years, they'll not spend money there. Okay. They'll rather spend their money on invest their money where the success can happen in the next eight to 10 years. Mm. So that's where these uh, AI driven investments are happening today. Yeah. Jignesh, the knowledge you're sharing is just amazing. People will not find this on YouTube, like literally in this language, you know, in a very easier language. Firstly, thank you. Thanks a lot. But before that, where are you coming from? What's your story? Like I didn't ask you this question before because I want people to experience your knowledge first, not your story. Because and I also believe you have a good story to tell. So what's your story where you're coming from? If you could explain it in a minute or two. Mm, my story is not very different from most of us. So I come from a uh, small uh, town called Ponnuru in, near Kuntur. 
okay. uh, in Andhra Pradesh. Mm-hmm. Uh, so from there, I went to pursue my engineering at Geetham, Geetham University in Vizag. Uh, that's why that's where I I was trained to become a mechanical engineer. Okay. Uh, later, I got a chance to work with Accenture for a year. Uh, that's when I realized this is uh, the corporate jobs are not for me. So I started my first venture uh, at the age of 21 in 2012. Uh, so ran it for a couple of years at tech. Uh, did not really see the money. So we quit that and got a chance to work with another startup for any years or so. 2016, we started this entity. Uh, so since then, four pivots happened. Uh, the current pivot is kind of making us some money. Okay. Uh, so that's where my journey has come from. Got it. So from Guntu to building a 50 crore company, you know, with, uh, you know, HR tech using AI and, you know, a little bit of gaming and stuff like that. What is your exact company? You know, what does your company do exactly? So the, the, the reason why we started this company is to is to bring new advanced technologies into the education market. Okay. I always believe that. I'll tell you my own personal example. Back in the school in, in Ponur where we studied, uh, most of the classes used to happen on the outdoor, in the outdoors, sitting on the on the mud uh, oh, with a with a board on the tree, tree etc. Most of the class, not all the class, but most of the class, we yeah. experienced that way. Mm. So back in the day when we were studying lessons on pressure, mercury, I am a I'm a physics geek. Mm. Uh, we used to have a chapter where mercury, you have to take it, you have to invert it, and then you will see the pressure barometer, pressure, etc. I never got a chance to do that experiment. Okay. The reason being, we don't have access to that much of mercury in a small school like that. Mm-hmm. So many kids who really want to do things, learn things in a practical way, could not get it because of lack of resources in those markets. Mm-hmm. And I was one of them. Okay. So that's when I said, if I have to do something to actually make things more practical. Mm-hmm. So my first venture was all about that. Uh, Suraj and I, when we started that, we wanted to create uh, the, the alternate education system, which is practical in nature. Mm-hmm. But we realized that it is not that scalable the way we were doing it. Yeah. When 2016, Oculus officially announced that they're releasing a consumer version. Next month, HTC Vive announced that they're releasing a consumer version. We said this technology might help us do something. True. And that's how we brought VR and we started working on creating POCs on education side of it. Mm. Then, by the way, this is a time when Baidu's is still not something that is as big as what it was. Mm. So no one really betted on education or, or a tech market. A tech in, a tech in general. Yeah. Correct. Forget AR, VR. Oh. AR, VR is too far. Okay. I'm talking about generally a tech. Okay. So that's when we realized this is not going to be something that's going to kick off, especially for a 25-year-old with no knowledge in uh, computer science. So or essentially, else. you started this to converge a tech with AR, VR. Correct. So that people could understand it because you're coming from a background where you're not able to do those experiments, lack of resources. Correct. So how about getting these resources into your VR headset in a virtual reality or doing those experiments? Imagine the case. I'll give you, you an example. You do that right now. Like we, literally people are not doing that right now. Like see, there's no can, company. See, there are two things here. You could do something for the sake of doing it. You could do something for your satisfaction. Mm-hmm. You could do something which can give you satisfaction as well as money. Okay. I I always looked at the first two. That's the reason I never made money. <laughs> and what I realized is if you don't make money, if you're a small tree, you can't give shade to many others. If you're a big tree, you can actually give shade to many others. True. So you have to actually become big first. Okay. To actually do something really solid. Look at the best examples. Elon Musk to anyone else. Mm. They first built something where they got a big exit. Now they could pursue the world-changing ideas. True. He, his first startup is not something uh, world-changing like it is right now. It's very back in the day. Yeah. It was still considered world changing. Yeah, uh, PayPal. Yeah, but yeah. But so before he, PayPal, he did a video game exit. That's where he, he got a lot of. That's money a small too. one. Yeah. Yeah, very small. But yeah, coming back. Yeah. Uh, this is where we realized that you know you need to do something uh, which you will get satisfaction, in, but at the same time it should also make money. Yeah. Now money making aspects, some things are too early for the market. Mm. You can't make money uh, from it today. Okay. But maybe ten years from now, yes. Okay. Now, can you survive the 10 years doing the same thing? Maybe no, because yeah. you don't have that kind of money. Exactly. Or investors are not willing to pay, give you that kind of money. Yeah. So that's when you have to pivot. So what you believe is people in a, in a mass scale can't afford that 60,000 VR headset right now to consume your education. Affordability is one thing. Yeah. Usage also. So are they finding it really useful? I'm talking about my experience 15 years ago in my school. Mm. But today, now almost every school has got this equipment. Governments are spending the money on practical aspects of things. Not everything, but most of oh, things. Yeah. So you should also see the social relevance at the moment. So a bunch of other things also kicked in there. Uh, but that said, uh, this is how we start pivoting. We realize this is not how it works. So we pivot. Pivot is nothing but you change the idea. You shift your path. 
So we pivoted like the three times and finally we realized there's a potential market in enterprise assessment space. Okay. So still at tech, mm. still doing understanding people in education, learning, etc. Mm. But now assessing what do they have inside mm. in terms of the brain capability, neurocognitive abilities, behavior, personality, communication, knowledge. So these are the things that we said can make money today. Mm. So in that journey, we shifted the gears to building VR-based talent assessments. By the way, we were the first in the world to do that. Wow. And actually, we got customers paying for that. We were we were custom we, we got customers like Accenture, Virtusa paying us, Maruti Suzuki. The very company you worked there is now yes. your, your client. It was my customer, by the way. Mm. So Schneider Electric, these are all our customers. Yeah. But then COVID happened. Okay. So that's when uh, no one was physically coming to an office to wear a headset. Mm. People don't buy headsets because it's too costly. So how does how do we give the test? Mm. So that's where we had to shut that idea. Mm. Now pivot. Mm. In this journey, we realized during COVID, everyone is taking tests remotely at their own homes. Mm. So the and internet is also picking up. Geo got kicked in in the market very well. So we said, okay, can we do something on a mobile phone, mm. scalable in a remotest part of the country? Okay. So this is how we pivoted to what we are doing today. Okay. Perspect AI today is game based assessments on a mobile phone. Okay. So the idea is, can you assess a person and give them a job by making them just play games? Okay. So this idea got bought into by big companies. Got it. So we have customers like Tata's and Birla's, uh, Ashok Leyland. So these are some of the names that our people would know. Okay. Uh, ICICI, Lombards, to whatnot. Is it for blue collar workers or white collar workers? So we do it focus. We started with the focus on white collar. Okay. Now we do gray collar. We don't do blue yet. Yeah, got it. So yeah. So can you do this and replicate this for white collar jobs also? Because that's a yeah, huge white market. Collar already. Okay. So we started with the white collar market. So, so we do it with graduates, mm -hmm. especially for roles like sales, PPO, KPO, uh, some functional aspects. Yeah. All the campus hiring. Uh, in fact, uh, Tata's has a program called. I have a program called uh, TAS. Okay. Uh, T A S. It is like the IAS. Okay. So when uh, Tata Group post independence created an internal program called uh, Tata Administrative Services. Mm -hmm. So it is where they hire people from the top B schools of the country mm -hmm. and take them into all Tata companies as leaders. Okay. So that too, that platform uses that test today. Okay. So can can we do this for developers? Because develop testing a developer is a little bit trickier than See, testing. What a does a developer person. need? Let's ask that question mm -hmm. first. So any job needs two things. Mm -hmm. One, the knowledge and skill of the subject. Mm -hmm. Two, the ability to solve problems, learn, reason, communicate, yeah. personality, behavior, yeah. these things. So we call them hard skills and soft skills. Mm -hmm. Hard skills are specific to the job. Mm -hmm. You need to be trained on it. Mm -hmm. Soft skills are irrelevant of job. These are required in a person. And these are things tough to train, too tough to train. Yeah. It takes time to actually learn those things. Mm -hmm. So... We do all kinds of soft skills, irrespective of job. Even for a programmer, yes, they need to be tested on Python, mm. but they also need to be tested on how well they can learn, mm. how well they can solve problems. Yeah. What is their solving approach? Is it divergent or convergent? Yeah. So these are the things that we assess on our platform. Okay. Got it. Essentially, this is more important than this. Exactly. Okay. Got it. Amazing. So you did a lot of pivots in your uh, career, almost half a dozen pivots from uh, starting from Geetam to right now. You, you did six pivots, right? At least. And what are your learning lessons with each pivot? See, the first learning that I had was don't create something because it is good. Good for you or good for... Good general? for me, good for the world, but mm -hmm. still it is not good for making money. Okay. So money is most important. Because it is business. Right. If you are not calling yourself a business, then money doesn't matter. You're an NGO. You can yeah. be an NGO, you can be a research institute, you can be a yeah. think tank, mm. you can be an academic institute. Mm. So if you want to call yourself an entrepreneur, if you want to call your business as a startup or a business, mm. the fundamental element that it has to have is money. Yeah. Who are the people that are going to pay me? Well, there are people who are going me. to pay, but is yeah. there enough money? Scale, to make like it scale. big. Yeah. Really big. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you an example again. So today in Indian market, the assessments, uh, all the Indian top players, Metal, Aspiring Minds, Amcat, uh, all these co-cubes, all of them together do not make more than 1,000 crores revenue. Okay. So if I go and attack that market and I capture the entire market, my business is only 1,000 crores. Yeah. It means I'm not a unicorn yet. Yeah, true. So for you to make something really big as a startup, you need to find a business where you can make thousands of crores as a revenue. Mm. Otherwise, don't call it a startup. And we call it as a TAM. We call it the total addressable market. Yeah. So the, the, the TAM has to be so big. Mm. only then you, you can call yourself a startup okay because you have the potential to grow that big okay got it so that day will come 
I I envision a day where today if you have a two wheeler or four wheeler, every six months you are mandated, or every one year you are mandated to go to the pollution check, yeah. pay them the hundred rupees, get the pollution document. True. Many don't even care whether they have it or not, just for the sake of it, policy per se. I envision a day where in five years from now or ten years from now, every person who is working would be asked to take a test to ensure they are work ready. Yeah. or they are still fit to work mm. that day would come yeah today yeah. that is happening in fitness or yeah. in, in medical aspects for yeah. certain jobs the day will come where the skill checks will happen true and that day is when the tab will be big yeah so but am i going to survive till that day with this with this 1000 crores market you can and you will thrive in that uh, 10 billion dollar market correct with the ai ready you know you need to test people whether they are ai ready that will increase your assessment market correct amazing essentially you could tie up with the governments and upskill working professionals all that you know so there are two elements right now until now we only discuss about assessment mm. now once assessing is done you will find what are the gaps what are the issues mm. that's when the learning comes into picture yeah so edtech is not just schools and colleges mm. edtech is in general people will continuously learn mm. they need to assess they need to relearn yeah. and learn yeah so these are the things where edtech comes into picture yeah yes before going back to metaverse since we're talking about edtech you know wave is going on right now big uh, wave of news is like hundreds and thousands of people were just saying different things about edtech where do you see edtech going on right now with the fall with the correction that we're seeing in the market right now yeah you use the word right correction is the right word there yeah uh, edtech has always been stable before uh, the byju scene came into picture Yeah. Uh, what happened with that is the growth has to be shown very fast. Mm. Uh, if you look at companies, even if you look at Byju's, for Byju's to become the public version of B two C Byju's, it took ten years. True. Two thousand seven or two thousand eight is when I think they started the GMAT classes. Yeah. Uh, but then GMAT and CAT classes everywhere. Yeah. Uh, but then by twenty sixteen, they could actually raise funds and start a separate entity mm. and go into market the Think Learn entity. Mm. Uh, but. This the amount of growth they have seen that short period made all the other investors also ask for such growth. When Vedantu, One Academy, all these other entities came in, they were forced to show that kind of growth. Mm. Luckily, COVID actually helped them to show that kind of growth. True. But the moment COVID went back, mm. this growth couldn't sustain. True. And when it couldn't sustain, automatically the the market sentiment went against it. Mm. And that sentiment is what is the cause for all of these things. True. So don't see it as the end of the industry. It is not going to be the case. it is going to be the correction for the industry mm. it will correct itself it will adjust the valuations back again eventually it will fall in place got it metaverse and edtech how can metaverse help edtech uh, and how can it help hundreds and thousands of students across the world to be the best version of themselves while they are learning and while they are still at a stage where their cognitive ability is just forming on stuff like that at the age of 18 to maybe 20 to 23 so how can this help because you already tried this in the past so i want to see if someone else could try maybe like an academy or vedantu can you know bring in metaverse factor of it and you know make it better because i see all these tech companies are just not using tech so hard like they are having an app and most of their tech companies are not tech first they are sales first right like sales is the money, money like sales is the situation or sales is a position they're spending a lot of money but not in the tech so there's a still a gap in ed tech people are using less tech can we use more tech in ed tech and make it little better as ed, 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 you know especially with metaverse see if you ask me there's always scope to improve the technology but a, a good entrepreneur or a good founder would try to do less and sell more true and if they're doing it that means they're in the right path a a a bad entrepreneur would be someone who builds a lot sells less mm. that's a challenge so don't yes you can always add more tech to anything but because you can add don't do that do it only to sell and if you are really good if you are really intelligent you would build less and sell more mm. So that's one tip that I have learned in my own journey. Okay. I have been the other person first. Okay. I used to build a lot of things. We used to build so many things which never went to the world, mm. but we never made money out of it. Mm. These days we don't even build. We just go and sell first. Yeah, that's what I did with my company Freedom with AI. I I didn't build the course. I built. I didn't build the community. I I built a webinar 
just sold and then created my whole company's backend exactly so that's yeah. the right way to make businesses work okay so that said there is definitely two important ways where we can leverage vr and metaverse way number 1 is the content side of it mm-hmm. vr definitely provides you the access to things which are otherwise not really possible with the school markets or college markets take an example in my engineering i was so fascinated about uh welding mm-hmm. uh, we i used to go take the rods start welding things i used to practice it a lot but i was always asked to stop because welding needs those extra rods to be consumed and i am consuming more rods than my quota so it's not good for them good not good for the college budget so i was asked to stop but had if i was given enough time and chance to continuously do that i would have become a, become a great underwater welder who would be earning multi crore uh, salary as well mm-hmm. so that's a possibility mm-hmm. but the point is why are such possibilities not happening because of lack of resources mm-hmm. access to those resources and uh, one of the reasons which we can't blame our own colleges or governments is the budget behind it what if we can make all of this without any consumable budget on vr mm. what if we can replicate any experiment any number of times so the student gets ultimate clarity on it before they go live to the next one mm. so these are some important content related aspects i've also talked about one of my story examples in the other podcast where you can actually give a multi disciplinary simulation Mm-hmm. you can ask the students to just jump in uh, into a situation and try to solve that situation using different scenarios around you okay and how you do that will give you score not just on physics biology or chemistry but also your life skills and your ability to handle pressure mm-hmm. bunch of those other things which are really relevant today in the market mm-hmm. so that's the content aspect of how metaverse can be leveraged mm-hmm. or vr can be leveraged mm-hmm. that said the other interesting aspect i see there would be the exposure to social aspects mm-hmm. today in fact this is very well known phrase you are as good as five of your top friends very true now where does this friends come come from from your college from your school from your locality now what is the constraint here from you finding the best people in the world it's a access to be to be there in physically mm. we are our metaverse can actually help you do that mm. you can sit in a virtual classroom in stanford Mm-hmm. with colleague from china mm-hmm. and you might find the best of the best people around the world the chance mm-hmm. of working closely one on one is even more higher there true so these are the aspects so there is an opportunity but also a challenge i it, see here what is the challenge here? always exists with challenge okay what is the challenge here with content, this opportunity content distribution of content so see when xbox came to market mm-hmm. playstation was the leader yeah Xbox could not get the business. Mm. It could not take pick one user from PlayStation. Okay. They're struggling. Mm. That's when a game called Halo came into picture. Mm. Xbox completely sponsored it and built it. Microsoft completely sponsored and built it and launched it. That Halo game was so damn good. Everyone wanted to play that. Had to buy Xbox. <laughs> now that they have bought Xbox anyway, now they start buying other games instead of Xbox. Exactly. So what happened here? One. Is the success because of Xbox or is it because of Halo? i would say both yeah nothing exists without the other so today there are so many devices in the market mm. but there is no halo kind of content yet mm. which will force users to buy more of these devices and use them continuously mm. so that moment has to happen until then the adoption won't be there mm. you won't buy a device if there is no real need for you or value for you on a day to day basis got it so that value has to come from somewhere some ad tech company right now creating content in meta a kick ass content i would say yeah which would, which everyone wants to buy Bikes because i already content. tried it in the past creating you no know, immersive content so many people tried no yeah. one could be successful yet mm. the entire industry is waiting for that one content to come out given 100 crores of uh, you know funding would you try i we would always try everyone is trying and we would also have uh, we have our own thesis mm. we'll work on our own thesis and we'll try it out mm. but the challenge is what works we don't know yeah you have to wait and see got it and the other challenge is content this is very intensive this is much more complex than any graphic movie true so you have to create so much content so easy to work on lighter devices mm. or processing power live rendering bunch of these things so it's it's a journey mm. it takes time there maybe 5 years technical challenges i don't know 
uh, if you have asked me in 2016, I would say five years. <laughs> But <laughs> now it's already five years from 2016. Or, no, eight years eight from years, 2016. Yeah. So I would say another eight to ten years. Okay, got it. So now, okay, let's get back to the other market. We talked metaverse with edtech. Let's talk about metaverse and crypto. Like crypto and blockchain is in one parallel line, and in in on one line, and parallelly we have metaverse. A lot of million dollar companies were popped up in 2021, 2022 when Facebook changed their name to Meta in the crypto area, right? What is even the link between crypto and metaverse? Like, how are they even related? See, first of all, we need to understand this. When you call a company a million dollar company, ten, mm. fifteen years ago, we used to do that because they are making that kind of revenue. Yeah. Today, they might have not made zero revenue. They any, might have any, made any, zero revenue. Any revenue? Yeah. Still, we call them million dollar company because someone gave them that valuation. True. So I would not call them a million dollar companies yet. Okay. At least why why they are trying to mix crypto and metaverse? See, meta is a new world. True. For the first time, we get a chance to create a new world from scratch. Exactly. When you get such opportunities, would you want to do it the best way possible, or do you want to continue with the current issues that we have in this current world? Obviously, the best. So that's how people start looking at the uh, crypto world or the blockchain world. Okay. So blockchain to be brought into real world today is very tough. Because so many systems have to be changed, so many concurrency aspects, processing data, multiple storage systems. So it's 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 so diversified. True. It needs a lot of work to be done. True, true. While given a chance in a new world, can I start it from the beginning itself? Definitely yes. Okay. That's the approach that they have taken. Mm-hmm. So today in the land records, uh, we don't have blockchain yet. Mm-hmm. But in the virtual reality world, why not have the blockchain from day one for the land records in the VR? Exactly. VR lands. Yeah. So that's how the concept started. Yeah. Today, let's say there is a Picasso painting. Mm. Now, a Picasso painting, we don't know whether it is Picasso or not. If someone really duplicated it well, true. But what if? Uh, and you need to have those art appreciators, museum experts to actually come in, fly through, ex- check whether it is really mm. the real one or not. Yeah. <coughs> what if in this world we have the blockchain embedded NFTs or the artwork or anything from day one? Okay. So that's the idea with which the blockchain or the NFTs or all these crypto-related aspects came into the metaverse worlds. Wow, this is amazing! It makes more sense right now, you know, than before because we're building a real world, and we know crypto and blockchain together be a better, uh, better versions of our current uh, versions, and we're just embedding them into this, you know, metaverse. That's amazing, and you are talking about the land, like. You know, you're just uh, drawing parallels between the real world land between you know with metaverse land. Why people were even purchasing the land that you can't see in the real world in metaverse? Why they're spending crores? In fact, I saw people were spending like millions of dollars. Why? See, uh, take an example here again. There are a bunch of NRIs, especially in the Telugu states, mm-hmm. who went to the US. Mm-hmm. They will never come back. Mm-hmm. But still, they send money here to buy lands and buildings, etc. Why do you think they build it? Investment. They will never see it. Yeah, but investment, appreciation. And what is the purpose of investment? Appreciation. Appreciation. Yeah. Yeah. When will appreciation happen? Supply demand. Yeah. So when supply is lesser than the demand, you get the chance to make money out of it. True. So, who will make the maximum money on that day? Those who have invested very early. True. When the supply is more, mm. when they buy it at that stage, when demand gets more, they can actually make money. True. Exactly the same science. Mm-hmm. It is for the first time a world is launched, so a lot of supply, less demand. Mm-hmm. Buy it now, cheap, mm-hmm. and bet on it. You are speculating it. Bet you are betting, saying that this world will become eventually something that people might want mm-hmm. to use. In that speculation, if that speculation goes well. You would have a multi-fold ROI, but how to find the best world here? Nowhere. That's not a possibility. How do you know what's the right place to invest? Which building to invest in? Uh, At least here you could see the you know surroundings. You know you you came to Jaipuri right now. You know the 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 surroundings you see the locality. You know the other the other buildings, the other valuations. According to that, you could draw valuation here, and you could research and invest here properly. And that world in the metaverse. Could be there will be similar research. Yeah, there are hundred worlds right now. There will be similar research. Take okay. an example. Let's say I want to sell land on moon. Okay. Where will be the potential chance of land on moon be costlier than the than the other places? 
Typically, wherever the landings have happened as of today, the chances are that the next landings also might happen on the same place. True. So that is a costier land. Oh, okay. Okay. So, or let's say, for example, which country is going to do more missions on the moon? Mm-hmm. If it is India, India is focusing on the other side of the moon. Okay. If it is US, it's focusing on the other side of the moon. Okay. So, okay, based on the market macroeconomics and data, what mm-hmm. we see, we predict this might be the next data to be okay. invested. So, these are all speculations. So, in a similar way, you, you need to see which metaverse is having more users, more use cases, ethics and moral morals of the particular founder. Where the traction is high. Okay. Where the footfall is high. Just like you kind of uh, research your stock market. I want to know. put a Frankie stall in a mall. Where do I put it? I put more it in falls. a place where more people are walking around. Okay. So, as simple as that. Yeah. Great. People would expect this question from me, so I need to ask, Hab, what what do you think about crypto Bitcoin right now? Because it went to sixty thousand dollars and now it is like forty, fifty, something like that. Forty five. I right never now. speculated on crypto. I'm I'm less of a speculator. For okay. one reason, I never had cash to actually invest. <laughs> okay, my cash is all in the form of my company shares. Yeah. So that's one reason. But number two, uh, I I still think or I don't find my foothold in, in that world yet. So if you ask anything about metaverse, I, I have some knowledge, I experienced it, I know what it is. Okay. I am I'm not a speculator in a world which I'm very far away from. So I don't do much. So if you it. have an extra cash, would you invest in crypto? Maybe. Okay. Maybe not. Maybe after that research. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Okay. So now that we talked about metaverse a lot, let's understand what are the three great use cases with metaverse that you are going that we are going to see in the next three five seven years down the line the best and top three see uh, things understand how the it evol- evolution of technology happened yeah evolution of technology started with convergence and later aspects true let's understand these two when alarm came mm. what was the first form of alarm the key one Mm, yes yeah, analog how did it evolve to a digital one yes okay when camera came mm. what was the first form analog Kodak reels and etc mm. then the DSLRs came yeah okay when a mo- telephone came mm. what was the use case calls true the next version is mobile remote calls mm. when smartphone came all these things started converging true nothing new mm. They have launched nothing new. Yeah. Everything converged into okay. one device. True. The comfort of having everything in one place, in one thing, that's the easier part. That's how the classic Apple, you know. Correct. You know, iPhone. Yeah, the pitch was that. Yeah. Steve, if you go back to the Steve Jobs pitch that day, mm. he would show this, 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 mm. this, 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 and all in one place. That's yeah. your iPhone. Yeah. So that's that's convergence. Mm. The other level of innovation would be in terms of later aspects, which mm. is completely something that doesn't exist. Mm. So if you look at uh, electric car, it's something that never existed earlier. Mm. But now an electric car where you can also play a game inside, which you can just park anywhere and use the LED lights to make it more of a music system. This is the convergence going on. Okay. So this is basically how any product or innovation would go in. Mm. Now to answer your question here, this example will fit in the Mm. structure there. Okay. So essentially what you're saying is, all the technologies we have as of today, f- the journey from analog to digital will continue to be the, in the metaverse. That's what you meant? Convergence. Convergent. Will so converge in, into metaverse. Into single, singular things. Okay. They'll all converge into the singular things. Got it. So what are the three industries that are going to see a hit because of metaverse? So when such convergences happen, let's look at where those convergences, con- convergences could happen. Uh, let's take an optometrician. Back in the day, if you need eyeglasses, you would go to a hospital. There would be an optometrician there. They would check it. Then you go to the vendor where they'll j- create those glasses for you and give it to you. Now, who lost the job first? The optometrician in the hospital moved to the eye sh- uh, the eyewear shops now. True. So you have a small machine mm. where you can go and quickly check your eyesight and mm. start with it. Mm. Now, what if a similar thing happens using VR. Mm. Near far vision, peripheral vision, and a bunch of other vision checks on a VR device in a school in a tribal area. Can happen. 
and these school kids would never need to go to an optometrician they would never need to go to an optom uh, the optometric shop because now you can just wear the headset every 6 months in the school quickly get your eye diagnosed and immediately the order will go to lens cart and your order would come and hit you in the uh, in the school before you move on to the second and third one i have a here irony here is it is easier to get is your eyes checked with your vr headset but it will impact your eyes right like your eyes will be impacted a lot because you're seeing it with like here so <laughs> what do that, you that's fine see uh, there there are always ways to mitigate and navigate through that mm-hmm. so it's even if it is very close to the eye how much radiation how much light do you send inside those bunch of other elements that can that, we optimize that without affecting our eyes doing it. that's okay. all being done okay. that's exactly what meta does okay meta's research is all about using the right kind of lens they call fresnel lens mm-hmm. so how to provide that how to give the stereoscopy without latency issues mm-hmm. so their whole core research is about these things wow so they are already on it you don't okay. have to worry about it so 3 years down the line will not have any effect like so much effect might but there is still research yeah who will it affect more is it young kids or is it old people or is it general population yeah so that's a, that's a research how will you know the research only after some people goes with 3 years of rigorous data points yeah. so you have to make someone sit there for 3 years yeah and actually collect the data so if that tech you're saying building a glass that will not affect eyes if that would have been successful it would, we should have already see we should have already seen that in in our uh, you know mobile phones but we still don't have a glass on your mob- on our mobile phone that affects our eyes now we're talking about here like mobile phone is here at least so how will that be any successful check a company called magic leap okay this is a company which introduced a concept very interesting concept where they create multiple layers of projection inside the glass mhm so right now in your glass it's a single layer projection true so there they create multiple layers of projection through light beams passing through multiple layers okay so there are very cutting edge technologies being evaluated and checked upon it's a work in mm. progress this magic leap company raised close to 2 billion dollars from qualcomm google microsoft wow. so big companies in a industry. glass company essentially they started with glass tech and then eventually they started creating a device as well they actually launched a device called magic leap mm-hmm. that was a costless device okay so but then the company got shut recently a uh, bunch of other things happened a lot of science is still in research labs which is very cutting edge mm. it will take time to actually make it production ready yeah so production ready needs machines to make it in mass manufacturing systems true so those to making those machines is also a bigger task yeah so it's a journey but till that 10 years time where we have that glass figured out till that time we'll today's, have that ice impact today's today's glass are already there what mm. kind of impact do you see with your mobile phone Uh, you would not see any big impact or considerable impact in the next ten years for your eyes. Really, depends on how People many hours. People say that if we use ten hours of mobile phone or see screens in a sim in some way. it is actually affecting our eyes the reason why people are having more glasses these days the contact lenses stuff like that the industry is growing because of that reason ex- exceeding the screen time three things here yeah one the environment mm-hmm. two your dna yeah three the content inside mm. so it's it's multiple things well, i'm i'm using as much as content i'm now 32 years old i don't have glasses yeah So again there are people at 60s and 70s they don't have glasses mm-hmm. there are people at the age of 5 they have glasses sure. it's a de- genetic aspect is also involved there oh there's so a bunch of other reasons there okay. but i'm not saying that it is not harmful yeah it it is harmful for different people differently okay so we need to figure that out differently okay. got it cool so got my answer thanks and now let's uh, come back to the second impact or second industry that will see a negative impact because of meta was first one is optician or that uh, you know that one lens cut will not be affected because it's a manufacturer but the hospitals might be little effective not effective this is just an example again mm. now the other examples could be your uh, trail rooms your fashion tech mm. where you can just stand somewhere imagine yourself wearing your dress in your avatar figure it out most important industry that we all think might be disrupted would be the travel industry So let's say for example today's biggest amount of flight travel happens because of business. Okay yeah 70% of the travel I don't know the numbers yeah I, I saw that once. Business is where uh, companies pay 
So you will go in business business class. Yeah. So that's a big revenue system for uh, the air, airlines industry, mm. airlines, hotel industries, etc. If I go with my money, I'll definitely not live in uh, a big Taj hotel with twenty five thousand rupees. Mm. Typically, people do that when they go on their company's money. Okay. So all the premium stuff might come to an end or slowly get cut it down, okay. because now virtual calls can happen more, 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 more uh, with the holograms and holograms and etc. Mm. So that could be a good possibility. But then here I see another point. Because we could work virtually anywhere, don't you think people will do this nomad traveling where they will work for a company in the morning, but they'll just travel all around. So you can. So the point is, you will still travel with your money. So your budgets and expenses will be lesser compared to when you are traveling in companies. Mm. So business class conversion to customer class would create. A lot of difference. Like ten x more people has to spend money to be. Take an example again. Level. The flight ticket would be thousand dollars if I go from here to San Francisco in a mm. economy class. And it would be easily ten thousand to fifteen thousand uh, dollars if I go in the best Emirate Emirates top first class. True. So that's the difference. Okay. So I would. These that's a Got prediction it. again. These are all Got predictions. Air, uh, airlines and hotel industries might get affected. Uh, even the general travel. So today, most of our Indians and even uh, the the Islamic countries travel is also because of pilgrimages. Yes. So Hajj yatra or even Kasi yatra and etc. Mm. Now these yatras could be more easier for people by just wearing a headset and just feeling the closeness of staying in front of uh, Lord Venkateshwara in yeah. uh, Tirupati. For a little more time. Little more time. In spite of course, spending all the time staying in four hours line, and you would not get. Te- Two seconds in front of the god deity. Here you would have a better chance, more pleasant experiences. But would prefer would people prefer that? See, I would not say people would completely stop doing it. I would say if they are going four times a year to Tirupati, now they would only go once, twice a a couple of years. So that affects revenues. So <laughs> metaverse will impact Tirupati's revenue. Definitely. Oh wow! Not just Tirupati, everywhere else too. Okay. So again, this is all about accessibility. That that feeling, that emotion, you have to create that. Mm. So yeah, that's the other industry. Okay, uh, airlines, travel, pilgrimage, all these things. Outdoor shopping. Yeah, and uh, the third industry is definitely going to be the learning, education, academic. Uh, that industry is going to be also drastically no schools affected because of metaverse intending. Ideally, so the the virtual school concept has already come. Mm. So you just take a school admission virtually. These days, there are a lot of schools that mm. have launched virtually too after COVID. Yes, even Samantha, if I'm not wrong, launched a school virtually. Know. I'm not sure. There yeah. are virtual schools concept yeah. already in the market today. Yeah. So these are existing, or they might get better. Mm. All right, this is amazing. <laughs> so I'm hearing this word called Unreal Engine. You know, where people could create games or something. I'm not sure, but it is so realistic. I saw a trailer of Unreal Engine, the latest version. It's just amazing, right? So, what is Unreal Engine, and how can that be playing a crucial role in the metaverse? See, to create content for this world, there need to be tools. Yeah. Actually, there were no tools back in the day, mm-hmm. so people have to start from scratch. Mm-hmm. By the time we started working on it in 2016, we came across two keywords to actually build content on this. Okay. Those keywords were Unity Engine and Unreal Engine. Uh, Unity was pretty new back in the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were a company who created a game. Game did not work, so they shut the game. But whatever tech they have built, they said, "Let's give this tech to all other game builders." Mm-hmm. That's how the Unity game engine came into picture. It's fairly new back uh, in 2016, uh, six seven years old uh, entity. Whereas uh, Unreal Engine has been a AAA studio engine. That means these engines are used by uh, top class studios to create high class uh, graphics content. That was their basic use case. Uh, slowly, they started pivoting into game engine aspects too. Now, in 2016, when we started, there is literally no Unreal developer in Hyderabad. Zero. Oh. No. Uh, one or two people experimenting it as a hobby. Hobby. Yeah. Unity engine. Yes, there were a few trying it out for mobile games, small games, and etc. We were actually the pioneers in training freshers from college on Unreal Engine. We took the license for Unreal official chapter for Hyderabad. Okay. Uh, we, we used to run a uh, run a community called Bonfire VR. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a meetup group. So it, it is officially under the Unreal Engines group. So that's how the journey happened. But today, if you have to make content, uh, these are the two platforms that you have access to. If you're creating mobile-ready solutions, focus on Unity Engine. Mm-hmm. If you're creating very world-class high-end graphics, mm-hmm. focus on uh, Unreal Engine. Mm-hmm. That's the way I give as a layman okay. feedback. So you could create... Uh, I'm sorry if I'm interrupting you. So you could create a game or you could create an entire metaverse using Unreal Engine right Correct. now. So in the engine, okay. what you do is there is something called level design. Okay. So that is where you can actually create worlds. Uh, you can just take this glass, a house, a boy, mm. and, and place them in a level environment, mm. show how the sun comes, where the light falls, what are the mm. colors. So you actually make the real world hand by hand, one by one, like the... Uh, in in Genesis, mm. uh, they say Jesus did this first, Jesus did that first. Mm. Like that, you could actually do it in Unreal or Unity Engine one by one. First I add this, then I add this, then I add that. And you make them interact with each other. Now there is a benefit of AI as well. So you can give the characters behavior of how they, they have to behave inside. Mm. You just define the characteristics, it will behave like an artificial character inside. Mm. So all of this is currently there in the market. So Unreal Engine can make you Jesus for your world. Correct. You are the creator for that world. So you 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 do what you want to do that. Okay. So yeah, that's basically uh, how f- these engines are used. Okay. Now the best part about these engines are you can use it for two purposes mm-hmm. or I would say three purposes. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, interactive VR content. Mm-hmm. Two, uh, the one-sided VR content, no interaction. That means it could be a movie. Mm-hmm. Three, it can be also mo- used in our TV studios and movie uh, captures too. Okay. So take an example again. Uh, I don't know if they have actually used, but Bahubali could be done using Unreal. Oh. Uh, you could have the real set, mm-hmm. but beyond that real set, the, the other elements could all be generated in the Unreal mm-hmm. Engine. Got it. So the the movie tracking, the camera tracking, the panning, etc. They are very comfortable inside the engine. Okay. So that's one of those. And things. AI will help it to foster like. So there are many ways Unreal of using X. AI. AI okay. is about. Uh, Auto generation of levels. Mm-hmm. I give that sample. Now I ask you to extend the level, like the entire uh, village, yeah. to auto create. So, yeah. uh, similarly, I can also make characters with predefined personality and characters and mm-hmm. how they behave inside, mm-hmm. interaction purposes. Yeah. So this it's is just saving time, at least by 25, 50 percent. Believe me, today Unreal has released so many resources free of cost mm-hmm. that you can just buy, uh, download them, create your world instantly. Wow. To buy tonight, you can have your own world ready. Okay. So things have become so easy in the marketplace mm-hmm. that you can just drag and drop. There are so many people who have built things. Just use them. So what is the future of Unreal, Unreal Engine developers? Or I'm not sure. Do we have so, any developers? Like see, that? Unreal and Unity are the areas you need to learn if okay. you have to become a developer in Metaverse industry. In VR, AR, XR, Metaverse, yeah. whatever it is. Or even the future of production also. So mm. cinematic production mm. or uh, studio level production. Yeah. Any of these engines. So how's the career in this particular Absolutely industry? Absolutely good. But the point is, it won't. It, it has jobs where you can make really good money. Mm. Uh, a salary of one crore is also possible there. Yeah, in India? Not in India. Okay. Uh, you have to go to US, Los Angeles or Australia somewhere where the studios are basically. Mm-hmm. In India, all the top studios have shut down. Mm. Rhythm and Hughes shut down and everything shut down. Mm. Uh, but that said, uh, Limited opportunities for now because okay. the industry is not booming yet. Okay. But every company is exploring something or the other. So as long as graphics stay, Unreal and these things would stay. Okay. How long will a person needs to spend the time, like, you know, one year, two years like that to get really good at uh, this particular engines to be placed at a package of one crore in US? When we, when we had our team on ARVR, our Unreal developers took one year to become a decent developer. Mm-hmm. Very rigorous work. Uh, two to three years, they've got they've got better. Okay, so two years to three years of uh, real hands-on experience, experience, hands-on yes. experience would get you a package of one crore in USA if you want. One crore won't be there. One yeah, I'm asking about, about one crore because that's the fancy. You name. have to be genius at what you do. So okay. let's talk about that one crore package. Mm-hmm. So you should be, let's say, for example, Game of Thrones dragon. Mm. Uh, the dragon specific aspects of. Uh, creating a level, using that level, panning, etc. Uh, you should be a director material mm. with unreal skill. Mm. It is not just a skill anymore. Yeah. So skill would only take you to X level. You would only do what others are asking you to mm. do. But the moment you have the skill as well as you have the vision of a director, mm. 
so that you can make things happen inside okay that's when you will become that so then i feel it's better to go for ms be a data scientist and you know you will get a better job opportunities See, no in better one in their right mind would choose a artistic career or a career mm. in the visual arts unless they're passionate about it okay if they if no one will go there for money okay money is very rarely to people who excel in the art okay okay so if you are someone just going for money don't even get here okay if you are really passionate about these things then come there is potential that you can make money okay what are the other ways people make can make careers in metaverse industry at the moment i think you can do small things but there's no big opportunities yet okay so but the roles wise there are three four roles a level designer a basic programmer a game designer a game developer so these are our art 2d art 3d art developers mm-hmm. animators mm-hmm. Uh, so these are some of the roles that are there in the market yeah uh, you you don't need to become a metaverse developer you, you will be automatically a fit for vfx graphics animation industry mm-hmm. so with the con- game, game industry with a lot of convergent thinking these days a lot of people were doing this ai influencers thing right is it also into this metaverse or ai world like how how you see this creating yeah. influencers AI influencers. Have you heard about it? AI usually people are creating the whole world with this influencers, and they're just building the world, and be, they're building the influencer, and they're creating social profiles out of this and making lots of money, crores you're, of money. You're saying a fake character is created. Yeah, a fake character is being created, and people are making crores of it. Out so of these it. are all presentation techniques. Sorry, these are all presentation techniques. Mm. So a good teacher could be someone who explains on a video with a board. Mm. or someone who explains like byju's with all virtual graphics mm. or someone who just gives you a story without any face just an imaginary story yeah so it's all up to the presentation and the presenter mm. so there's no right way or wrong way to do it as long as audience understand and like you okay so th- these are all fancy ways of doing things okay so i'm i'm talking about the career opportunities there do you think ai influencers Uh, these are all niche areas okay i you won't get 100 people more than 200 300 people decent jobs mm. no the reason why i'm asking is ai i'm mean, like you know meta is betting on it meta is paying real life influencers like uh, you know uh, you know exactly my point Mr. why Beast. is meta paying them yeah. why are they not doing themselves okay that means still it is not ready okay they're not building it from scratch they're already leveraging the opportunity and leveraging the popularity so the point is if people really see value they'll automatically flock together no one needs to pay you to do that okay if someone is paying to do that that means people, when do an ad when, when do a product come to you to sell a product mm. uh, and pay you for running that ad mm. because they need it to happen mm. if people are already buying it why would they do that anymore got it as simple as it. so getting to country level from individuals level we missed on a lot of things right we missed on uh, you know the internet boom it boom social media boom we also missed on search engine boom like you know the search engine we don't have any of this the camera we are shooting the mic uh, the editing software we use the youtube video that we upload the platform everything is not in us you know in india so what can government as a country government can do to not miss on this metaverse wave because metaverse could be really big and could impact and create trillions of dollars to our economy if we do it right So what See, I think right now we should not focus on metaverse as a country. As a country, we Why should only that? focus on AI. We should focus on hardware. Okay, that's the next gig for us. What do you mean by hardware? Can you just explain the boom of hardware? See, what happened in China is what should happen in India now. Okay. So if you look at why Tesla is not in India yet, why mm-hmm. Apple is struggling to find things in India yet, is because Indian government is just is very proactively putting them. Uh, putting them in constraints saying that if you don't manufacture in india we will not allow you to sell in india mm. now why what will happen with this today the products are coming from outside they are selling it here and then they make taking the money back mm. so jobs are not staying here profits are not staying here someone else somewhere else is getting benefited mm. at least if the company comes here and manufactures number one the economy flourishes more jobs more transactions more money will flow mm. and profits also will tend to stay in the country that's how our country can get better so that means with and and with the entire world focused on india now that it is the highest consumption market so everyone wants to sell in india now if they want to sell in india we have to also manufacture them in india mm. now what is the constraint now we, are, we don't have enough skill in manufacturing 
in high-end manufacturing. So these are the skills that we need to focus on to develop so that the real economy flourishes here. Got it. So, Number two, AI. Mm. So we have literally zero startups from India who have gone to the global scale and really done big in, there. In terms of AI. We need to bring that here. Mm. That is how you can stop the brain drain from India to US. True. So the moment we stop doing that, that brain drain won't happen. Mm. We will have our own Baidus. We will have our own uh, Alibaba's generating. Mm. So Alibaba is no more a Chinese company. It's a global company. By the way, it's Baidu, not Baiju's. Baidu. Yeah. Baidu. Yeah. Mm. A, a Chinese $50 billion company. Correct. In Their own version of Google, I would say. Yeah. Got it. And he he predicts that, uh, you know, in seven years, we will be needing half of the world's jobs. For half of the world's jobs, we need prompt engineering as their primary or secondary skill. Do you have any thoughts on that? Absolutely. I agree. So, see, prompt engineering is nothing but your ability to talk to the computer. Yeah. Your ability to give computer the instructions, it will generate results that you are craving for, you are asking for. It sounds so easy, but is it? If you understand, it's going to be easy. Let's say, for example, there is a small kid. I ask them to put uh, the jam butter and bring it to me. Mm. I ask a mature kid to do the same thing. I mm. ask uh, a cook to do that. Mm. Do you think I'll get the same result always? Of course not. So here the ask is the same, mm. but everyone does it differently. Got it. So same way, the models are going to mature. Today, the model is what? Less than a year old. Yes. So the moment it gets older mm -hmm. with more context and more depth of it, mm. it, it does like a cook. Got it then you don't need to be more specific. Mm -hmm. So today, prompt engineering might be complex mm -hmm. because the models are young. Mm -hmm. When the models become mature, even mm -hmm. the slightest hint, it will understand what you need. Okay. So then prompt engineering won't be that complex. Yeah, it will be easy. Like you can learn like a software engineering code or something Correct. or even be a little more easy. Correct. Got it. So now uh, coming back again, we're coming back so many times. So now, uh, you said government should focus on hardware and AI and importance of it. But how? Like how, what are the three or four policies or regulations government could take to, uh, you know, to impact the country in a good way? First, let's talk about AR four ways and AI three, four more ways. See, government is already doing things. Okay. So we have world-class AI uh, setups being done, policies around uh, AI as a core structure being done. Like? Uh, let's say, for example, if you look at NIC, mm -hmm. uh, the national entity for all our information, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, so this entity is focused on creating a data repository from Indian context. Mm -hmm. The biggest challenge in creating any AI model is lack of data. True. And lack of Indian data specifically, Very which true. is which is something only governments would have sure. uh, access to. True. So they are trying to see what is the data that we can publicly release so that our AI startups can benefit by creating custom models. Yeah. Chat GPT for India. Something like ChatGPT, but with Indian context. Our own models, let's say yes. our own models. So this is something that uh, already is work in progress. Okay. A lot of data repositories being launched by the government of India. Mm -hmm. uh, they are asking us to use those data models or data repository and create uh, models via hackathons. Bunch of these hackathons are being launched. Mm -hmm. so there are good things going on in that direction. Great. Similarly, the value for setting up our own servers, our own data centers, uh, that's also happening. So now we have uh, Google, AWS, all available in Mumbai, Hyderabad. Mm. Uh, so no, especially Hyderabad. Yeah. So we have Microsoft, we have AWS, everyone, Google setting up their own data centers in Hyderabad. Mm. So when data centers are here, that means our data will be here. Mm. So a lot of governmental applications can also come online. Okay. So a bunch of these things are happening around. Uh, at the same time, recently I was at uh, an Ayurvedic uh, trust. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I came to know that this gentleman, uh, the doctor there, is working with ISRO and AIMS Delhi uh, to create a specific model to interpret the pulse reading and predict what could be the potential disease inside. Okay. So today, our ancient doctors, uh, even our Ayurvedic doctors are very familiar with pulse, uh, Nadi Vaidyam is what yeah, they call it. True. So they just hold the pulse and understand what is your Vata Pitta Kapham inside wow. and basis that they will give you the treatment. They, they can also predict what's going on inside you. Yeah. And the, the skill still exists. Yes. Unfortunately, the current generation of doctors might not be trained enough on these skills. True. What if we leverage AI now, just put a small reader here, mm. uh, like the ECG reader, and then uh, it, mm. it reads and gives you a prediction. Exactly. A diagnosis without any intrusion at all. Wow. So non-destructive methodology is what we call mechanical and civil engineering. Yeah. So you don't need to put a needle, you don't need to draw something, just something on overlapping 
on the on the surface of it mm. gives you some information got it so government is working on such modern creations as well mm-hmm. so a lot of things are happening in research it will take some more time before we know that what else can government do i don't know <laughs> let them do what they're doing it <laughs> yeah. do you think we're lacking in ai we're lacking that's there right like in terms of creating See, for large lacking, language no model. one is gone further yet this is like when the first car was made it was mm-hmm. made in the us okay so henry ford created the first production line Mm-hmm. If you say, are we lacking in it? We have horses, mm-hmm. we have buffaloes. Okay. So, but at the same time, as it picked up, we have we got our own Tatas, we got our own uh, Mahindras, and etc. Mm-hmm. So we will eventually get them. Okay. So we are not lacking, but we are just we, adapting. We are in the direction. We are okay. in the right direction. Because there is no Indian company that right now has at least like ten percent as good as ChatGPT or Google Bard, Google Gemini, or the recently twitter See, released indian it. data would be useful for global data okay indian people won't pay for indian data okay check that how many people actually have paid accounts of chat gpt in india mm. it will be minimal okay compared to the global revenue possibilities mm-hmm. so right oh. now if you, even if you build those cutting edge technologies in india people are not willing to pay but i'm not talking about building llms for india in india i'm talking about building llms in india but for the world you can't why because data for that data access you have to go to that world it's uh, i think there is a startup that uh, is taking all the data from all the countries and giving it as easy as an aws server right that's now yeah but this did not happen 5 years ago okay so it happened just couple of years ago so now onwards they'll start building it mm-hmm. so the real access to the data actually happened 10 years ago mm. that that's when they actually start building these things Mm. they those universities got funded to do these things true where is there such funding in india yeah so do you think india should start funding they're doing it really but not enough okay yeah yeah so since we're talking lot of technologies and you know lot of technologies were invented or were created because they need to fight against some country essentially during a war and i heard you saying about this you know in couple of colleges in your uh, keynote speeches So what is that war analogy? Why countries innovate during wars? See, humans are lazy, lazy creatures. True. Okay, so we don't do anything unless there is a push of fire or a pressure, something, True. something really pushing you forward. Mm. So that could be your boss, that mm-hmm. could be the government, or that could be something like a war. Mm. So wars are the extreme scenarios mm. where people will have less resources. people will be in fear people would want to win so they have to move faster these things would come very rarely to create a societal impact together let's say for example in my company i am someone who wants things to be done today mm. so i'll talk about a feature today i'll tell my team to develop it today and give me mm. this is my urgency will they have the same urgency maybe not but in the, in the case of war everyone will have a sense of urgency distributed well true so and they all want to do in less mm, less time less time and less money also less resources got it. got it and they don't care whether they know they have, they have the know how or not they just care whether the opposition have the know how or not if they are doing it we should do it that's mm. how the attitude would be mm. so these are the things would re- which would really contribute to th- to things going very fast mm. innovations becoming very fast or coming out very fast during wars mm. look at any innovation for that matter take the case of atom bomb why is even the atom bomb created if you look at the openheimer movie mm. the movie talks about that they are doing it so we should do it exactly. before them mm. and that's how the resources were uh, mobilized mm. a new town was formed and everything moved forward similarly when india launched the aran pokran test mm. or when we uh, let's take an example of airplanes mm. airplanes came from wars for that matter okay. right brothers created them in 1902 but they were commercially super viable only during world war 1 world war 2 mm. and once that is done they're so damn good now they started bringing it to the real worlds mm. i recently watched uh, a documentary on uh, harry davidson okay it's on discovery mm-hmm. so it's a three season episode it says uh, exactly the same thing during wars they wanted to bring their uh, they want to be a support to their warriors on the on the front so they created machines which would work in spite of dust mud and etc today that is the reason why they go very well on the off roading systems mm. so these are the things that some of the examples that we can take why wars really make things work faster and better mm. 
Similarly, take the example of internet. Where is internet coming from? It's from an organization called DARPA. Mm. DARPA is the DRDO version of uh, US. Mm. So they have created this in their lab in 1940s. Mm. Later, slowly it came to what we know today. Mm. So every major technology, every major innovation mm. comes from that stressful environment, mm. especially during these wars. Okay. So, yeah. And so the country that, f- uh, that fought more wars might have more innovations in it. Chances are high. Okay. Any country that you could name uh, because of the war? Let's they... take a very simple example. War is an extreme example, but let's talk about another extreme example. Pandemic, COVID. Mm, mm. So war kills more people. Mm. You want to win it. Mm. COVID kills more people. Mm. You want to win it. It's yeah. the same scenario, right? Yeah. Now, during COVID, many things changed. Mm. For the first time, a vaccine was released in less than six months in the world. Mm. Not India, in the world. Yes. Why? Because it's the same innovation, but it is they're forced to do these things in mm. the short term. Yeah. With less resources. Because high and, stakes. And India created these vaccines in, in this very Hyderabad and, pa- and sent them across the world. Very true. So these things could... Uh, and this was all in the recent movie again. Which movie mm. was it? Uh, on Go- Indian Vaccine War. Yeah, Go- what, Vaccine, vaccine War. war yeah. We should watch that movie. Yeah. So it talks about how India innovated uh, to do this. ICMR made this happen mm. in a short period of time. Mm. So wars are not just when I say wars in, in the context of people killing each other. Mm. It is also in a war room scenario like these things. Mm. So that's when things will be pushed. Got it. So what I got here is India is already doing so many good things in a macro perspective. In micro implementation, it might have failed in a couple of things. But in macro perspective, it created vaccine, it created so many things. So do you agree with me? That in the macro I don't perspective, think India failed. See, we all do with what we have. Mm. We don't imagine something from outside the world comes and helps us. True. So that way we did a lot better than the developed countries of the world. Yeah. UBI. So, not just UPI. Yeah. Think about during the COVID, uh, the number of days that China went shut down without product without production at all. Mm. To what India has done. Yeah. Look at the birth, uh, the the hospital beds and etc. The pseudo uh, tent based, uh, very instant mechanisms that we created compared to what US could do. True. So to handle twenty crore population, they were struggling. We handled the Assam say one hundred and twenty crores, crores. crores. Wow. not one hundred and twenty. Wow. One hundred and forty crores are Assam with, with multiple fold less resources than them. So I, in any way we see our, see Indian, Indian mindsets are brilliant. Mm. And when a, when a situation comes, we will crack it mm. one or the other way. Wow. But the That's point true. is if we have got resources, if we have planned these things earlier, or if our governments have listened to these things earlier, mm. things would have been slightly different. Yeah. But when the crisis comes, we are the best people to manage, at least in all the things that we have seen. True. Thank you. Thank you, Jignesh. Thanks a lot for coming in to decode uh, Purpose with Avinash. So that's one impeccable podcast I have ever been to, uh, even ever listened to. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much for having me.